Hey guys, so today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be solving the Rubik's Cube's white cross. Basically what this means is if you know how to solve the Rubik's Cube, you know this already. Uh, in order, to, The first step is basically solving the cross. And it's not just a cross for the white, it's also solving it for the sides so that this matches up uh, on the second layer. So white and orange match up with the second layer's middle piece. So does white and blue and so on, as you can see. So... The way we're going to be doing this is, is that we're going to be using several methods. Um, not methods as in theoretical methods, actual programming methods. The first one we're going to be using is the master method called white side. So public static integer array sending this to the method and returning the same thing. Oh, forgot to name it. White side. Okay, and of course we have to add it to the main method, so the entire white side. So we're just gonna go cube underscore colors equals white side There we go. Now inside cube underscore colors we're going to have a few methods also. Uh, essentially two. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be solving the white cross which I just showed you here and we're going to be solving the white corners which is those pieces. No, the yeah these corner pieces right here. Um, the reason why we're doing it in two parts is when you're solving the Rubik's Cube without a computer or just by yourself this is what you need to do. Um, it also helps to organize the program by having two methods. So I'm just going to make those methods right here. Static cross And I can't spell today. There we go. Now in white cross, we're going to have four methods. One for each of the pieces. So we're going to have, I'm going to copy it over. One for the green and white piece, one for the orange and white piece, one for the blue and white piece, and one for the red and white piece. The reason why is because if you have one continuous method, there can be problems with the cube underscore color values such as it not changing or it getting corrupted because it doesn't know whether or not you performed one piece already, whether or not you put the green and white piece in the right place. So that's the reason why you're using four different methods. And again, it also helps with the organization of your code. So we just need to make these methods public static integer array okay don't know why that is giving me an error, but I'll figure it out in a second. So white second, third, and fourth. Cube underscore colors. Incompatible type. Oh, here we go. That's why. I forgot to include uh, that it's a second tier integer array. Okay, uh, so this is the skeleton for the white cross. Now, before we go on and solve the white cross, I just want to include the last method that we're going to need, which is white corner. And since 
it's pretty small right now because we're not doing this in this video I'm just gonna copy and paste it you really don't need to worry about it right now it's gonna be in the code in the description the link will be in the description so just don't worry about that right now so I'm just gonna collapse all this to an editor fold and call it white corner there we go collapse all the stuff we don't need right now so the entire white side explain that already the white cross I explained that so now we're gonna work on the white first edge basically what the white first edge piece is is the white and green piece so we're gonna take it from whatever place it's in and move it to the right place so let's say for instance if we go back to the Rubik's cubes you can see here that if we have it mixed up and then we move the white and green piece to a certain place for instance if we move it to zero one and the way you know it's zero one is I have a different cube where I took off all the stickers and just put like a third of the sticker on top and just mark the uh, numbers of where it is but if you don't want to do that I'm sure you can take a sharpie and write right on top of there but you're gonna need two cubes if you want to do this easily but anyways at zero one if it's white and at 43 if it's green then what do you have to do to get into the right place you're gonna have to move orange counterclockwise and white counterclockwise and then as you can see it's in the right place so these are all if statements and you're gonna put a lot of work into this and for each Rubik's cube you're only gonna use it once so as you can see what I just explained, if at 0, 1 it's white, and if at 43 it's green, then you move it orange counterclockwise and white counterclockwise. Um, now one anomaly that I have to explain to you is if you have it at 13 is white and 0, 5 is green. This means that it's in the right place, so let me just show you right here what the uh, values are so as you can see 13 is right here this is 13 and that's white and at 0, 05 it's green so if it's at the right place then you don't have to do anything technically you don't even need this if statement but I just needed it for the video to explain to you guys now once you move on to the second edge piece this is where the codes gonna get longer and longer for instance this is if the white group piece and the orange piece are in 0, 3. So let's just move the white and orange piece to 0, 3. Now, if it's in 0, 3, then what you're going to need to do is you're going to move it green counterclockwise, red clockwise white clockwise twice and then green clockwise again and then you move the white and orange piece into the right place however you the reason why you did all those is to keep the white and green piece in the right place if you hadn't kept the white and green piece in the right place then that wouldn't have been an issue so what we did first was we moved green clock, clock counterclockwise so we moved it out and then we moved red clockwise to move it into where it's supposed to be in the white face and then we moved white clockwise twice to move it into the right place where it's supposed to be and then we put the green and white piece back by moving green clockwise so you're gonna have to find ways of moving around the pieces that you've already done and that's just something that's gonna happen now that you understand how you're going to do it I wish you luck it's going to be tedious not hard just tedious and time consuming and you're going to have to pay attention pay detailed attention to especially these numbers if you don't if you try to copy and paste it just pay attention to these numbers otherwise you will run into issues and also avoid moving around the other pieces too much you want at the end of each of these you want to make sure that what you did keeps the old edge pieces in the right place while moving the the new edge piece into its own right place so I'm just going to show you how the program that I made works 
and I'm going to give you a demonstration. So, so this is uh, what it looks like mixed up. As you can see, none of the white and other pieces are even remotely where they can be. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to enter in the numbers into the program once I start it. There we go. So what we have is we have blue six three one three and then yellow is four I don't know if I mentioned this before but we are going to find a different way to enter these numbers in because this is extremely inefficient so look forward to one of those videos in between now and when we actually solve the cube two six five because if I was to make a mistake right now, then I'd have to enter everything in once again. So I'm definitely making a graphical user interface for this. One, three, one, three, six, one. Two, four, four, two, six, four, three. Spin it onto the orange side. Five, five, six. Then yellow is four. Five, one, one, two, five. And then the last one is the red side, which is two, two, five, two, six, three, six, six, four. And these are the moves that we need to make to solve it. So I'm just going to do these moves and you'll see that it gets solved. So the first move is red counterclockwise, then green counterclockwise. Then red counterclockwise again. Then white clockwise. Then blue clockwise. White counterclockwise. Red counterclockwise. Blue clockwise. White counterclockwise. Blue clockwise. White clockwise. And red counterclockwise. Now, as you can see, it's all in the same, the right place. White and blue, white and red, white and green, and white and orange. So you know that it works. Now, if you have any issues, just copy my code. It'll be way easier for you, especially if you understand what you're doing. So good luck with everything, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.